Good morning, y'all. Wake up. I'm not watch. I got bless y'all. Uh, little by little, y'all. Uh, you know, it's a time for everything. Uh, just like how we gotta live, we gotta die. It's reality. Uh, it's a time for everything. Uh, I like that movie, uh, that Karate Kid do when his dad died or whatever. Uh, Mr. Miyagi's dad died, and Lil Daniel wanted to talk to him. And uh, he said, if you did the best thing you could, man, you spent some time with him while he was alive, uh, and you was there with him when he died, uh, or around him. Uh, things ain't gonna be perfect, man. Enjoy your time with your people while you can. Wear it up. But uh, it's gonna be some tough times in life. It ain't no way around that. It's gonna be some tough times in life. But nevertheless, Lord Jesus is gonna keep your heart, mind, and spirit all right. He's gonna protect you down here. And he's gonna make sure you do, you be all right, even though it's a heartbreaking place down here. Um, he'll be all right. All glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Got to give credit, honor, and glory to who is due. Amen. Okay. Today's Saturday, uh, November the 12th, 602. What it do? God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Hey, there's another place that's way better than this. <laughs> Let me go to Hebrews chapter 2 real quick. <clears throat> uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Say, Jesus made fully human. What title say? Jesus made fully human. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, say, It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of him? Brother David said. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. And putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet, at present, we do not see everything subject to them, but we do see Jesus, who was made who was made lower than the angels for a little while. Now, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. Amen. Listen, it's, death is a hard thing, but through death, let me keep reading. But we do see Jesus, who was made a little lower than, than, than the angels for a little while. Now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. And bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should be made the pioneer of their salvation, perfect for what he suffered. Amen. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here I am and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, speaking of Satan, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, for this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. I love this. Uh, Jesus Christ breaks the power of him, Satan, who holds the power of death. <clears throat> death, the last enemy we got, we got to face, y'all. I know it's a hard thing, but through death is freedom. 
don't nobody want to die and this and that. But through death, that's that's, that's when we truly be free. Up out of, up out of this body, ain't no more suffering. You don't want to see people laying around suffering in the hospitals and stuff like that. I'm just saying, uh, I'm sure they don't want to be there like that. It's a hard thing if you know people in the hospital like that and going through some things. Like, I, it break my heart when I look on TV and see them little children, little children, man. Uh, they didn't ask to be here, but they go through it. It's a tough place we live in. It's a real tough place we live in. Uh, but nevertheless, God got a better place in store for us where there ain't no more pain, ain't no more crime, ain't no more death, ain't no more suffering, ain't no more torment, ain't no more waking up with, with, with the physical elements in your body. It's a beautiful place, man. And if you know Jesus Christ, everything gonna be all right. That's something that that's that's one that's one of the best things you could ever hold on to. If someone who say they know Jesus Christ, it ain't nothing to be said about. Ain't nothing to be said about because you know they gone to a whole not a better place, baby. They ain't they ain't gotta worry about it no more. God gonna give them a brand new body, a brand new mind, a brand new heart, a brand new spirit. I mean, they got the same spirit, but he gonna he gonna make them like Jesus. The Holy Spirit will let you know, and he'll open your eyes to show you. Nevertheless, de death is a sad thing, and we all got to face it. But it's another place up out of here where uh, Lord Jesus make everything all right. Uh, y'all bear with me. Yeah, bear with me. And it's in Revelation 21, a new heaven and a new earth. God gonna make everything new. I love that. And I told y'all, every area where we fell, Lord Jesus has a seated phenomenon. I can't explain it to you like I want because the Bible say no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mouth has spoken of the things God has in store for those who love him. You just keep on holding on, on, keep on, holding on to God. I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> it's not a loss when you know who the Lord is. It's a win. Even if you lose, if you lose down here, it's still a win. Listen to him. <clears throat> you can take that to the bank. Don't let Satan, the world, and sin convince you out of the words. That's why it's good to hold on to the Lord through and through. <clears throat> uh, Revelation 21 said, new heaven and new earth. Uh, I can't wait for all our loved ones that's passed away. And who say, if you're not saved, I don't want to talk about it because it's not uh, it's not a good place to die and not know the Lord. Because uh, judgment awaits, man. If you die, if you die, you're not saved. You don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's eternal judgment waiting for you. And I don't want to speak about that. I need to. But uh, it ain't no really hope for the people who, who died who don't know the Lord. But for those who die and know the Lord, it ain't, it ain't nothing to feel bad about y'all. Y'all rejoice and be happy because they up in heaven and uh, they're not suffering no more. It ain't nothing but glory, glory and praise going on. Uh, I know it hurt, but it be all right. Revelation 21, verse one say, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea I told y'all, the sea, we look around, 75% 75, 75 of the world is, uh, of the earth is made up of water, correct? All right. Uh, the God judged the world the first time with a flood. He flooded everything out. Uh, water, water uh, quite often represents, uh, symbolizes the Holy Spirit, but sometimes it represents judgment. When God judged the world, he used water. And in, in the new heaven and new earth, there is no sea. Why is that? Because there ain't no more judgment. God judged everything. Word up, listen. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe whoo, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. <laughs> One day, Lord Jesus Christ gonna walk up to you and wipe your tears personally. Because <laughs> it's a lot of heartbreak. Why <laughs> that?
Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> On this side of the earth, there will be some pain. That's something that we can't escape. <laughs> Jesus suffered down here. He suffered. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 says, Just as Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same attitude. Amen. <clears throat> but listen, uh, I love this. Jesus Christ can wipe away your tears person. 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 I love that. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. I love that. Or mourning, or crying, or pain for the old order of things that's passed away. Amen. Uh, he who's he <clears throat> he who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. <laughs> then he said, Write this down, for these for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring. Uh, <clears throat> to the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Amen. Uh, those who are vict those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual morale, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So y'all hold on to Lord Jesus, and may he keep your hearts and minds sent and protected in him through everything. A little bit of pain on this side, but uh, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. How much time I got? A little, a little bit of time. I ain't gonna hold y'all too much. But listen. All right. <clears throat> yeah, God bless y'all, man. Um, all right. We uh we got through with Joseph and then Joseph. I, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. I ain't catch this till the other day for real. I thought it was pretty cool. Joseph and his family all ended up in Egypt, and God blessed them down there in Egypt. Nevertheless, before Joseph died, <clears throat> everything was good in Egypt. <laughs> and I guess they they was getting comfortable in Egypt, but Egypt wasn't the permanent home for them to be. And Joseph said to his brothers before he died in Genesis chapter 50, verse 24, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take, and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> I wonder what made him say that. Because they was down there in Egypt, and God blessed them down there in Egypt. But God, J Joseph uh, told them about the exodus, about them exiting up out of Egypt. <clears throat> Where that? I think it's pretty cool in Genesis, even way before that, in Genesis 15, if y'all paying attention. The Lord told Abraham <clears throat> in Genesis 15, uh, when he made a covenant with him, Genesis 15, verse 9. So the Lord said, bring me a half, a goat and a ram, three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these uh, to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, how he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said, God put him to sleep. <laughs> when you're in the presence of God, and that he is rather he gonna he gonna he gonna come to you in a dream and put you to sleep. <laughs> because to be in his presence is suicide. <laughs> if you think, make it simple to you. <laughs> you can't go to the bottom of the ocean without a submarine. Try it and see what's gonna happen to you. <laughs> you can't go out in space without a spacesuit. Try to see what's going to happen to you. I want to see if you come back. <laughs> I bet you can't get nowhere close to the sun. Outside, the real physical sun that's hot, that, that, that we see every day, try to get close to it. I bet you burn up before you get near it. <laughs> Let alone, God is the maker and creator of all these things. You think you can get close to him? <laughs> and not, and you, you, you need to have a suit. You need to have a, bit of, you need to have a submarine to get to the bottom. You need to be in a space suit. And, and uh, you need to be in a spacecraft to be out in space. Huh? You got to have a suit. You got to have a suit to be in the presence of God. You got to have a holy suit. You got to have a body like Jesus. And God going to give us one one day so we can fully be in his presence. But until then, 
it, it's suicidal to actually see God face to face. It's too much for you. It'll destroy you. That's why, why that's why quite often when the Lord comes, he put people he put people to sleep or he comes speak to them in a dream or in a certain way. <clears throat> uh <laughs> listen. And then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your, your descendants will be strangers in a, in a country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. God told Abraham a long time ago about your children ending up in Egypt, and they're going to be, uh, be... God told Abraham a long time ago, before Exodus was anywhere near Abraham, he told him, know for certain that your children going to be uh, strangers in the country, speaking of Egypt, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I'll punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. Uh, you, however, will go to will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here. Amen. Uh, For the sin of the of the Morites has not yet reached its full measure. I, I like the fact that the Lord told Abraham about the Exodus and Joseph before he died. He told his brothers and them that God gonna come, God gonna come and take y'all up out of this place. They won't even enslave that. Now we about to see what happened. <clears throat> Exodus chapter one. Joseph just now died. Exodus. A new Pharaoh came and took place. The old Pharaoh. Uh, that Joseph and, and when 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 Joseph and them was in Egypt, it was a Pharaoh there who feared God, and God blessed Egypt. Joseph and that Pharaoh died. A new Pharaoh came and took over, who didn't care nothing about God or Joseph. <laughs> now listen, <laughs> when when the righteous rule, all the people are happy, but when the wicked rule, and uh, all the people groan and complain, the Bible said. <laughs> Word up. Uh, you got a good boss, you're going to have some good workers. If you got a hard boss, you're going to have some mean workers. Now, that's how usually I go. But anyway, Exodus chapter 1. Let me sit my coffee before I get this done. I've been sipping for a minute. I've been talking for a minute. <laughs> I said sipping for a minute. <laughs> Same thing. You know what I meant to say. Take it in reverse. What do sit on that Willy Wonka jump? <laughs> we got soap. We got, uh, we got, uh, we got, I got so little to show you in so much time. I said, scratch that reverse. <laughs> that dude, <I> like, <laughs> you gotta have some sense of humor, man. Listen. Uh, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Uh, Exodus chapter one. <laughs> God bless y'all. Say the Israelites oppress. These are the names of the sons of Israel. Jacob's name is Israel. God, God changed Jacob's name to Israel when he wrestled with <clears throat> These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishakar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher. The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 and all. Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died, okay? Joseph and all that generation died. His brothers and them, all them who knew who the Lord is, they died. Okay, but the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increasing in number, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. The, then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. <clears throat> Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced slavery. Okay. And they built, and they built uh, Pithon and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor and brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields and all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. The king of Egypt said to, said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Sephiriah, Shephiah, 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 
Shafrai. 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 Whose names were Shafrai and Pua. When when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the on the on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives have fear God. I love this. If you fear God, I love this. The Egyptian midwives, these the Egyptian midwives, they fear God. You hear me? I love that. Did you did, did you read that? Did you hear that? The king of Egypt said to the Egypt to the hold on. Uh, the Hebrew midwives. Okay, I'm sorry, but nevertheless, same thing. The midwives fear God. <laughs> what up? Uh, they ain't gotta be big scholars. <laughs> if you fear God, it's gonna, it's gonna stop you from doing certain things. <laughs> what up? The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, uh, "When you help, basically, uh, what's that John called? When what's the John called?" I can't think what it's called when you abortion. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically what he wanted them to do. You know, God, God, if anybody who had abortions or been through that, God forgive you. He will forgive you and you're able to be forgiven. But he not, he, that's not a part of his plan. Uh, because the Lord don't believe in, in killing the children. Right up. I know if you end up in a situation where if a man or something don't want to help you out to be around God to take care of you, it's a reason for the babies to be here. Rather, uh, I know if it's hard or not, but it's or, you know what I mean. But God don't want you to kill them. Okay, that's not in that's nowhere in in the in the law book in in God's book that say you get rid of your children. You see what I'm saying? But these people came here with those type of practices and stuff, and they make it hard. It make they influence the people too. You don't want to go through a life like this. So God is that you. You never know what God will do for you in this life. Uh, you never knew what God. You never know what God will do for you through your children. You see what I'm saying? I believe. Uh, I'm telling you, man. But uh, that they this the first people who did. Okay. And the woman feared God. Uh, and they won't listen to the king. Word up. <laughs> they, they said, the king said, if, you, if, if, a, if a Hebrew woman have a boy, throw him in the river, kill him. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? That's murder. <laughs> Why? Word. But if it's a female, let her live. <laughs> nah, the woman fear God. If you fear the Lord, it'll stop you from doing certain things. Amen. And if, and if you mess up and, and, been, and been on there, the Lord able to forgive, like word up, because he un he understand, he understand. You when you you ain't the first one. Uh, <clears throat> the midwives have a have fear God and did not want and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. Amen. They let the boys live. Then the new king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, "Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live?" The midwives answered Pharaoh. The Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. <laughs> so God was kind to the midwives. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, He gave them families of their own. Amen. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people: Every Hebrew boy that is born to you must be thrown into the Nile, but let every girl live. <laughs> The birth of Moses, uh, Exodus chapter 2. Now, a man of the tribe of Levi, Levi is one of, uh, uh, Israel's sons, uh, Jacob's sons, one of Israel's, Jacob. The Levi is the priest trap. Uh, that's where the tribe of the priests come through. Uh, now, a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she had him for three months. <laughs> but when she could know, I love this, but when she could know, but when she could hide him no longer, when you do all you can, and when you can't do no more, you trust the Lord with everything. Because sometimes it'll be like that. Sometimes it'll be like that. I love that. I love, I love that. Listen, 
But this woman, the, most months, she trusts in the Lord. Listen, but when she could hide him no longer, she got a purpose basket, a piper's basket for him and coated it with, with tar and pitch. Same thing Noah uh, coated that, uh, uh, the ark with. He pitched it inside out. It pitches like a representation of the, of, uh, of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Where it pitched inside and uh, then she placed the child in it. And, and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Moses Moses month couldn't hide couldn't hide him couldn't hide him no more. She placed the child. She she put him in a basket, pitched it inside and out, and put him in a basket along among the reeds uh, along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were take were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. <laughs> he was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Uh, then then his sister uh, then his sister asked Pharaoh's asked Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes. Go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. <laughs> Moses' mom did all she could by faith, and when she couldn't do no more, she put Moses in the river and trusted the Lord. She, she put him in a spot where the, where the Pharaoh's daughter go to bathe at. <laughs> she, ain't, she ain't kill him. She couldn't. She couldn't take care of him no more. I guess the people was closing in on or whatever. Moses getting old, he crying, the baby crying more and more. He, she couldn't take care of him no more. She didn't kill him. She put him in a basket and trusted the Lord. She put him in a river and she had her sister. She had. She had her daughter. It's like go wash the basket and see what's gonna happen. See where it go to. You know what I mean? And and God, <laughs> God, the Moses one trusted trusted the Lord to see what would happen to Moses. Listen, and God provided. Uh, Pharaoh's daughter to come right down to that same spot, <laughs> and and the baby stopped right there where she was at. <laughs> where the you if you can't take care of, uh, you can do that do that adoption thing. Somebody the Lord will provide somebody somewhere. Where that that's 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 a good way. Where death never the answer. But uh, that's a good way. And uh, that's if it come down to that. Trust in the Lord, though. And that's if you can't do nothing no more. And the women, y'all, y'all, it's, 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 it's for women because they, it's, cause they know, because they know, because it's hard. It's hard for some women out there. It truly is hard. But God able to take care. God able to take care of you and your children. But listen, Moses and Mom trusted her, trusted the Lord, put the baby in the river, and went to Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter found him and went and sent the baby back uh, to his mother and also paid her to take care of him <laughs> uh, till, she was older, till he was old enough. Yes, she said. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I'll pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. Stepson. It says her son, but he it's, 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 it's a... Moses was the stepson of Pharaoh's daughter. So she named him Moses, saying, I drew him, I drew him up out of the water. Moses couldn't have had it better. Moses, he had, he, Moses ended up in the king's palace growing up. Listen. But having a kingdom without the king is nothing. God will put that in your heart. It's a blessing. God will put it in your heart. Seeing pleasure before a season to, 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 it's not about what you have or this and that or your, 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 your background or whatever, the status of your background. Let's, uh, Moses flees to Medan with the title say. Moses couldn't have had it better. I know a whole lot of people wouldn't mess that up. <laughs> they wouldn't, they, they would have not messed that up. Moses never forgot about his people, nevertheless. Moses' mom, she did a good job. She taught him. She taught him. Just they don't take them, but a little while. They say, teach. The Bible say, teach a child when they're young, and when they grow up, they won't forget the way. That's what the Bible say. Teach a child when they're young the way, and when they get older, they won't forget. 
I know y'all, it's a whole lot, it's a whole lot of grown people who they grandma or granddad and took them to church when they was a little kid and I and they have not forgot it yet. I bet you. I it's still things I remember as a little boy. <laughs> I'm telling you. I ain't want to go do nothing, but my grandma, she did the best she could. I'm telling you. I still remember to this day. I ain't forgot nothing. I did a whole lot of smoke and a whole lot of drinking. <laughs> I walked down the street stumbling <laughs> many times, but I ain't forgot nothing. I said, teach, teach a child when they're young, and when they get old, they won't forget the way. What that verse said. I ain't got it in my mind right now because I've been thinking about something else. But this here, give me a second, please. Don't take me number 10 and say, teach a child. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Say, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. <laughs> you get the kids when they're young. That's when you're supposed to. Teach them when they're young. And when they get old, they won't forget. <laughs> a lot of people don't teach the kids when they're young. <laughs> That's why there ain't no sense of direction. God bless the people who ever put any type of direction of the Lord in the person. Like I promise you, that that be the that that be the difference maker between life or death. It might not be right now, but as they get older, I'm telling you, it be the difference maker. But why? That's why you see a lot of stuff out of whack. Uh, but anyway, Moses' mom taught him about his people, only for a little while. <clears throat> Moses grew up in Pharaoh's home. <laughs> he grew up in the palace. He had it. <laughs> he ain't had he ain't had to go check on his people doing nothing. But, but but read this. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were. <laughs> what? Why he do that? <laughs> because he knew who his people was. How he know that? His mom did a good job teaching him just a little bit when he was a kid. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Other words, he wouldn't know who his people was. <laughs> Listen. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. You know, Moses sitting back. If this don't mess with you, this, 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 how, this how you let you know right here. If you got it all and you see your people sitting back struggling, it don't mess with you, something wrong with you. Moses sitting back in Egypt. He got it. And he went out to see his people and see them being mistreated. <laughs> you know, it hurt, bro. You, you, dang. A lot of people don't, they're not going to go check on you. They, just, they are. <laughs> hurt. Moses ain't had to go down there. Uh, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, uh, one of his own people. Looking this way and seeing that no one was there, <laughs> Moses seeing one of the Egyptians beating on the Hebrew, he looked around. He don't see nobody. I'm about to stop this dude. That's what he think. <laughs> ain't nobody around. <laughs> this dude trip. Uh, looking this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian. And hid him in the sand. Moses killed the Egyptian? Yeah, murder. <laughs> One of the commandments don't murder, ain't it? Yeah. Why he killed the Egyptian? Because he seen the Egyptian mistreating his people. That's okay? No, it's not okay. <laughs> he tried to do things his way. It wasn't his time yet. Uh, when we do things our way, it don't go right. Moses killed the man. Okay. The next day, he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you rule and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard, when Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled to Pharaoh, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Medan, uh, where he where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Medan had seven daughters, and they came to draw water. And it's something about that well. I told you it's something about that well. Every time they, the the Lord Moses did what he fled to the wilderness. Uh, what did he do? He fled to Medan, where he sat down by a well. That's drunk like in the desert somewhere. And it's always somewhere like in the wilderness when you outside when the Lord meets you. Bless you. Now, a priest of Medan, uh, he, uh, he sat down by a well. Now, a priest of Medan had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the thrust to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away. 
But Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to rule their father, he asked them, why have you returned so early today? They answered, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Rule asked his, his daughters. Where did you leave him? Invite him. So uh, invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who, who gave his daughter, Zephor, to Moses in marriage. Zephor gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershon, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help, uh, and their cry for help, because uh, uh, the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. I like that. I love that part. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> I love that. There's something real, real special about that. God, he keep his word. We end up in a spot. Everything was all good. when They, they ended up in Egypt by Joseph. Joseph told all his people to come down here. God blessed them and the family. <laughs> Joseph and all them died. I guess they got comfortable in Egypt. This new king rose up. A new pharaoh came and made a heart on these people. But God told them that y'all coming up out of Egypt. <laughs> uh, God told them a long time ago. God made a promise to Abraham a long time ago. <laughs> and he, he made that same promise to Isaac and Jacob. <laughs> right up. And he's still, he still keeping his promise to this day. <laughs> What promise? <laughs> to your offspring, I get this land. <laughs> you know, they went through some things. <laughs> Everything that's happening is for this reason right here. Genesis, I told you I can't get out of Genesis 1. Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish and the sea, the birds, over the livestock and all the wild animals, the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That's what's going on right now. He already... Let us make mankind in our image. That's what's going on. It's happening in the, it happened in the past, present, and future, current. God spoke in the past and what's going on in the present is to make us in the future. I'm just saying it's, it's, I lose y'all with that. I can't get out of Genesis 1. I can't talk to y'all like I want to because I lose y'all. <laughs> but everything that happened, man, it's, 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 it goes to that. God making us in our and in, in God making us an image he wants us to be in. An image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, in, in his way. In his way. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> We gotta go through something. <laughs> it's the whole reason. I can't get out of Genesis 1. I lose y'all. I don't wanna lose y'all. <laughs> but it's the reason for everything. God still he, he keeping his word. He, everything, that's why stuff be going on. I spent another two, three hours trying to explain that to y'all. <laughs> but I'm getting off of here. God bless y'all. Little by little, man. Y'all keep on taking the good with the bad. It's gonna be all right. Uh, you got to go through some things. I know we don't want to, but you got to go through some things. We got to. It's a part of the plan. Man. Keep on asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He's going to give it to you. The Holy Spirit will lead the Lord, leading you to Lord Jesus now. Lord Jesus is going to lead you to be on with our Father in that one. Then you get up out of this place where there ain't no more. All right. <laughs> I can't even explain like I want to. But, uh, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God bless y'all. Y'all keep praying for me. I keep praying for y'all too. And I see y'all again. Amen.